our last topic for the day is iteration. And we'll learn about the while statement, which is the way to perform iteration. So computers are most effective if you can get them to do the same sort of computation over and over again, because they're really fast. So a while statement is a way to do that. For instance, I combine the names I and total to zero and zero, respectively. And then while I is less than three, I can update I to be the value of the expression I plus one. And I can update total to be equal to whatever total was before plus I. I execute that while statement, and now i is bound to 3, and total is bound to 6. Let's understand exactly how that worked. There's the code I typed in. Here's the execution rule for while statements. Evaluate the header's expression. If it is a true value, execute the whole suite then return to step one. Now we see that term a true value, we're going to need George Boole to watch this Boolean context. Okay, let's just execute the thing step by step. We start at the top, executing i comma total zero zero gives us this global frame. The next thing we do is evaluate i less than three, i is zero, which is less than three. So. If it's a true value, we execute the whole suite. First line of the suite rebinds the name i to a new value, i plus 1. The next line binds total to total plus i. Notice that i is 1 right now, total is 0, and so total is rebound to 1. And then we return to step 1, that is, we evaluate the header's expression again. So is i less than 3? It certainly is. Now i is i plus 1, and total is the current value of total, which is one, plus i is two, is three. So now total will be bound to three. And we repeat. So we go up to the top, while i is less than three, is i less than three? It certainly is, because it's two. Now we're gonna rebind i to i plus one, so now i is three. Here's the really important part we're still going to update total because we execute the whole suite before returning to step one and ever looking at whether i is less than three. So i is currently not less than three, but that doesn't matter. We're still gonna finish evaluating the whole suite because remember we're right here, oops, right here, and uh, we're in the middle of the suite. So we'll finish it up, i is bound to three, and total will be bound to current total is three, i is currently three, so total will be six. Then we go up to the top again, and we ask is i less than three? This time it's not, and so we're done. Okay, so that's how a while statement works. Now let's use one to actually solve a problem of interest. Okay, we're gonna define a function choose, which takes in a total and a selection, and returns the number of ways to choose selection items from total. So if you have a hand with five fingers, you're coming up with the number of ways of holding up two fingers at the same time to make the peace sign or the hang loose sign or whatever else you could make with just two fingers. Turns out there are 10 different ways of doing that. Okay, so choose nk is typically defined in math as n factorial divided by n minus k factorial divided by k factorial. Probably you've seen this in some math class before. Now, that's not necessarily the most intuitive way to think about this. Really, the way I like to think about it is as a numerator and a denominator, where the numerator involves selecting the different things. So you start out with five different fingers to choose from, that's n, and then you pick one, and then you pick another one among the four that remain. So that's n and then n minus one. And then if you're gonna hold a third finger up, you'll choose among the three that remain, n minus two, until you have however many fingers you're gonna hold up. Okay. So you get k terms in the numerator. What about the denominator? Well, that's to account for the fact that it doesn't matter what order you hold the fingers up in to make the peace sign. 
So uh, that's k factorial is um, you start out, so you chose one finger to hold up, and then when you choose your second finger to hold up, it doesn't matter whether you chose uh, your index first and your middle second, or your middle first and your index second, so you divide by two. Okay, so choose five, two is 10. The choose function gets large very quickly, so choosing six items out of 20 in total, there are lots of different ways to do that. Let's define how to compute this numerator and this denominator together. So we'll set way is equal to one, that's the number that we're going to return at the end of the day. And we'll also keep track of the number of items we've selected so far among our selection. And we'll keep selecting items until we've reached our selection. So what do we do? Well, we select one more item than we had before, and then we update ways, and we update the total that we can select from. So the total we can select from will be total minus one, and the ways will be the number of ways we had to select uh, we've come up with so far times some term and your goal is to figure out how to write that term such that choose total selection the function will in fact compute this formula that we're interested in and then return it as ways.